Great. Uh, <clears throat> so, what is negative 3x divided by negative 4? Positive 3 fourths x. 7 divided by negative 4? Negative 7 fourths. Does not. This one doesn't divide well, so you just kind of leave it alone. Okay. <clears throat> we haven't. Number 3 was like the first lesson we did this chapter. But we also did that stuff last chapter. I don't know if you guys remember it. Yes. Uh, make a table and graph. Most of this chapter we've been slow for minor stuff, but you guys remember how to do that? Make a table and graph? Yeah. I lost my place. Should take you like 30 seconds. <laughs> So what x value should we use? Okay, you can use 1, 2, 3, 0 is usually pretty easy, 0, 1, 2, whatever. Okay, if x is 0, what is y going to be? 2 times 0 minus 3, y would equal negative 3. If x is 1, what would y be? <coughs> Two times one minus three negative one. You just plug it in. Two times one minus three. Y would equal negative one. Plug in two. What's two times two minus three? Three. Positive one. All right. Where is zero negative three at? Negative three. Zero, negative three. Where's that? Yeah, right zero down three. So it's down three. Where is one negative one? Right one, down one. And two one. Right two, up one. Numbers to the right are positive. Numbers to the left are negative. Up is positive, down is negative. Anyway, and you do I'm gonna go ahead and draw the line. <coughs> okay, on number four, how should we graph that line? I guess they didn't say you had to use slope and wire stuff, so you could try this in case you haven't like learned this chapter yet, but it's easier to use slope and wire intercept. Alright, 
three, where are we gonna start this graph at? Up one. And where are we gonna go from there? Down two. Down two. Right three. Yeah. Down two, right three. So it's rise over run. So the rise is negative two. The run is positive three. Or you can go backwards. You can go up two, back three. How are you guys feeling about this one? I mean this test, not this problem. We'll find out tomorrow, I guess. Time will we tell Yeah. All right. Uh, Lauren, do you know what's different about number five? Yeah, it's still in standard form, so you probably want to change it to slope intercept first. Get y by itself, yes. I'm not going to do it quite yet, though. So we get y equals, so notice everything got divided by 3, every term. Negative 2 divided by negative 3 does not divide well, so it's just 2 thirds. 6 divided by negative 3, however, is negative 2. Okay, so where are we going to start, Lauren, do you know where we're going to start that graph at? Negative two, which means down two. Negative two on the y-axis. Okay, where are we gonna go from there? Rise two, round three. Rise two, round three. Or if you go backwards, fall two, back three. on six. Would you find the y No, we're not we're not writing the entire equation for the line. We're just writing the slope right now. So how do we find the slope? Do you see where like the uh, dots would be? Like, yeah, where are the points that are identifiable? Um, one, negative one, one. Negative one, two. And 
one, negative one. Okay, then once you identify a couple points, you can find the slope, the rise and the run. So how much is this line rising? Negative three, and it's running over two. So the slope is negative three halves. If you go this way, it would be rise three and run negative two. So it's still negative three halves. All right, so okay. Well, there's there's kind of two formulas you have to have memorized. One of them is the slope-intercept form of the line. That's the y equals mx plus b. You guys got that memorized. The other thing is the slope form. How do we find the slope between two points. You guys remember? <coughs> y minus y over x minus x. Okay, and of course that's coming up next. What, num what number are we on? Seven. So the directions are find the slope of the line between the two points. Okay, let's do three, negative four, and five, two. Yeah. Uh, it just so happens that that number out there is going to be the y-intercept. The x-intercept would be hard to find. Harder to find. When you, have, when you write the equation in this form, when the x value is 0, the y value will be b. So this is the y, 0, whatever. It just it just works. That's kind of why. Should we do two of those? Yeah, let's do another one. matter? No. Okay, so if you did negative 4 minus 2 and 3 minus 5, you should get the same answer. In this case, 2 minus negative 4 is 6, 5 minus 3 is 2. That does reduce 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I guess 3 or 3 over 1 slope. <coughs> and then I say, since we have to plug in I Oh no, we're not writing an equation for a line yet. We're just finding the slope right now. Okay, so Abby, do you know how we would set up number eight? Okay, it's actually negative five minus. Yeah, you gotta be careful with how many minus this could make. Okay, negative 5 minus negative 3 is actually a plus. So anyway, that would be negative 2. Negative 8 minus 6 is negative 14. Yeah, that will be negative divided by negative is positive. They reduce, if you divide by 2, to 1, 7.
we kind of done, have done this already, but slightly different. Let's do 5x minus y equals 2. And Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so you get y by itself, and then it's in slope-intercept form. So yeah, you subtract 5x. What's okay? A lot of you are forgetting to bring that negative down. By the way, um, what is 2 minus 5x? Yeah, I don't know. So it's just, but we're gonna leave it negative 5x plus 2. Then how do we get rid of this negative? Divide by negative 1. When you divide by negative 1, it just switches all the signs. So it's y equals positive 5x and minus 2. Okay. But the question really is, what's the slope and what's the y-intercept? So can I, what is the slope? Yeah. Negative 2 is the y-intercept. And the way the book usually writes it is 0, negative 2. That's where it would be on the y-axis. Slope is 5 over 1, or you just put 5. kind of worried about this page. Start with this one. Okay, what is different about number 11's graph than the rest of them? It's inequality. Okay, inequality. So this is kind of the inequality section. It's got a greater than or equal to instead of just an equal symbol. Um, All 
All right. Um, Corbin, where do we start that graph at? Uh, go down to. Down to. And then uh, go down to and then go over, run three. Right, or down two, right three, yeah. down two, right three. And then do the opposite. Or up two, back three. And then it would be a solid line. <coughs> solid line because it's <coughs> up, because of that. And it would be a shade above. Right. The way you read this is y is greater than or equal to blah, blah, blah. So that means we need a shade greater than the line. Above the line. <coughs> okay. Twelve usually kills people, as well thirteen. <coughs> so if you get it wrong right now, you probably should study it. Okay. After that ominous warning, Brooke, where are we going to start at? Yes. Okay. There is no number out here, right? Like this one did? So what's out here then? Nothing or zero. So the y-intercept is <coughs> zero. Where are we going to go from there? Rise two, and run one. Rise two, run one. Two as a fraction is two over one. So rise two, run one. Should the line be solid or dashed? Dashed. Because it's just less than, not less than or equal to. Are we shading above or below the line? Below. Below, because it's less than. That would be all this stuff over here. <coughs> What's the line x equals negative 1 look like? On the graph? Yeah. It'd just be, since it's greater than x, be Well, let's just start with this. What's the line x equals negative 1 look like? Dot negative 1, prime 0, negative 1, 0. Okay, it's not just a dot. Yeah. What's this is negative one zero. What's this? Negative one one. Negative, negative one one. What's this? Negative two one. Negative one two. Negative one three. Negative one negative one. All these points have in common a x value of negative one. That's why it's called x equals negative one. Okay, which side, and it's greater than or equal to, so it's a solid line, which side should we shade if it's greater than negative 1? The right side. Yeah. Where are the x values bigger than negative 1? This is x equals negative 2, negative 3. This is x equals 0, 1, 2, so it's over here. So it's all this stuff. Part. 
Okay, we're kind of done with the graph paper after this, so I'm going to go back So, Miranda, when we write the equations for these, what form did they take? What did they usually look like? Yeah. Yes. So, y equals mx plus b. For number 14, what would this, what is the, let me start with this, what does the m stand for? So, and the b stands for? y-intercept. So what would the slope be on number 14? Five. Five. So it's <coughs> y equals 5x. Normally we do like 5x plus b and then how do we find the b? You plug it in. Plug those in. Okay, zero negative two is kind of special. Yes. Zero negative two is a uh, if you think about where it is on the graph, it's it's on the y-axis. So that actually is the y-intercept. So it is going to be five times zero is zero. So b is negative two. So zero negative two actually is the y-intercept. So anyway, negative two goes where the b goes. <coughs> So you don't really have to work that one out if you remember zero, whatever is the y-intercept. But you do have to work some of these other ones out. All right, on 
Moses on 15, what should we do first? First, we have to find the slope. Slope. How do we find the slope? Y minus Y over X minus X. So the slope is one half, so I got Y equals one half X plus B. How do I find B? You plug in one of the numbers above. Yeah, let's plug in these twos. That's unlikely to get that wrong. So if I plug in those twos, what's one half times two? One. So how do I solve for B? Subtract one. So B is going to equal one. So my answer is going to be Y equals one half X plus one. the slopes of parallel lines. They're the same. So, AJ? Yes. So you need to figure out the slope of that line and then use it for your line. So how do I figure out the slope of this line? Negative A over B. Okay, negative A over B or what's the other way? Find the slope intercept. Change it to slope intercept form. So if we subtract x and divide by negative 3, what is the slope going to be? What's the slope going to be? Uh, negative one, or one third. Positive one third. Okay, if their slope is one third, our slope is, needs to be one third. So we got this slope and this point, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did on the last problem. So our equation is going to be y equals one third x plus something else, not negative two. So to find uh, the b value, we're going to plug in the point they gave us, negative four one. It's not going to come out very pretty. You guys know what negative four times one third is? Negative four thirds. And if you add four thirds, that's like adding one and one third. So four plus one is five, plus one third is five and one third. So, this is our answer. We're just going to replace the V with five and one third. So Y equals one third X plus five and one third. It's a four. Oh, is that a one or a four? It's a four. Whoops. <coughs> and, uh, two and one third. This one doesn't say write an equation. Uh, let's see, what should I do? Let's do x, I think I might have done this one Okay. So we need a slope perpendicular to this line. Slope of a line perpendicular to this line. 
So, you guys remember what we know about perpendicular slopes? Yeah. Opposite yeah. reciprocals, yeah. negative reciprocals. Um, what is the slope of this line? Okay, you can solve for y again, or you can use, just for time's sake, I'm going to, negative a, so negative 1 over b, negative 2. So it is a positive 1 half slope. So if this line has a 1 half slope, our line is going to be negative 2 over 1, or negative 2. Okay. Um, I gotta make one up real quick. One plus one equals two. That's a one. I don't know how I can make one plus that. Okay. So the last question. I'm not gonna write the directions down, but it's: Are these lines parallel? Well, maybe I can write that. Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay. What is, let me start with this one. What's the slope of this line? Negative six fourths. Okay, if you use the fast forward trick. If you're not good at that trick, <coughs> you can always solve for y again. Negative 6 fourths reduces to negative 3 halves. Okay, what's the slope of this line? Negative 2 over negative 3, which is 2 thirds. So, are these lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. Right. Right there. 